Tom Fitzalan, Lord of Clun Castle. This, magnif this once magnificent building was passed to my family in 1199 from the Robert de Say family. They founded this castle after the Norman Conquest, a typical modern bailey to suppress you, ugly little Saxon peasants. My castle is unusual in having not one, but two baileys. This shows just how great I am. Down there, you'll see my first and smaller bailey. Unfortunately, we can't visit it today, because someone's turned it into a bowling green. Ridiculous. The key advantage of having two baileys is that if one is turned into a bowling green, you have another. My second bailey is down there. Welcome to my bailey. It's French. Um, well, it's French. This is where you'll be living. This is where I keep all my supplies for siege. Water, food, bread, meat, everything I'll need. It's where I keep my blacksmith, repairing my armour. It's where I keep my chapel, makes me and my family look respectable in the area. You live down here with a garrison, you're protected. Most people, they'll be forced to live out in the village, they're not even in the castle. I'm also a seat of government, a marcher lord. I can order executions, I can order imprisonments. I don't need to ask the king, I am the law. All across the Welsh borders. You get to live down here, it's safe, it's secure, good quality buildings. Where do I live? I live somewhere much better. I live up there. Welcome to my mot. This towering mound upon which I've built my towering tower is the real heart of any castle. Artificially constructed by gangs of filthy peasant labourers, it provides me with a great overview of everything around. On this separately walled enclosure, I would defend myself and my family inside my magnificent stone residence. This place has huge defensive value. It, when it was in slightly better condition, it had massive walls all running around the edge, through behind which I could hide in times of trouble. The steep sides of a mot give me a massive advantage fighting from the top. Aside from that, I have great fields of vision. Well, I would if all these hills weren't in the way. So why modern Bailey castles, I hear you ask? Following the Norman invasion, the Normans were left trying to suppress a hostile and brutal landscape, that of Staffordshire. They came in and they built these small but cost-effective fortresses. This is not a defensive network, it's an offensive machine. This castle enables me to dominate all the peasantry for miles around. They are now my peasants. They give me money, they serve in my armies, and I take their sons to war. Over those hills lies a dark and fearsome menace, the Welsh. That's why I need you to understand castles. Castles, warfare, and the stakes. And that way you can help me defend our fine land from these leek-eating savages. Now some of the more educated amongst you, maybe those members of the clergy, will be thinking, looking back at my school books, modern Bailey castles were always made of wood, and this does not look like wood. Well, often modern Bailey castles were made of wood quickly, because you can't wait for your Saxons to hang around, they're going to come at you straight away. So you quickly throw up a wooden structure. But once the ground has had time to settle and your artificial mot is strong, you build stone. Aside from being an extremely comfortable place to live and dominating my local subjects, this mot has twice been placed under heavy siege. In 1216 it was attacked by King John. You know him, Lion, sucks his thumb a lot. He came, he conquered. I didn't do so well. But I was given my castle back once King John had shuffled off his mortal coil. And during the reign of Henry III I was attacked by a Welshman, Llewellyn the Great. Ha! <laughs> Llewellyn the nothing. We held him off with relative ease. While the castle was able to withstand two sieges, it proved nothing against the ravages of time. In the 1280s, Edward I conquered Wales and removed the threat of the Welsh once and for all. Since then, with no real strategic value, the castle has been allowed to decline somewhat. My great four-sided keep is now a three-sided keep. The walled enclosure is a little bit unwalled in places. 800 years ago, this castle was defended by stout men of England. These days, it has a small metal fence and an orange sign. Equally effective, I'm sure. Despite the ravages of time and tide against my once magnificent fortresses, it remains much of its majesty to this present day. Now, let's get down to the reason you're sitting through is rubbish. Arms and armour. Now, in this period, everything is divided into three categories. Slashy, stabby and smashy. Now, each of these weapons and armour 
has a different strength or weakness. It's like rock, paper, scissors for men. In this period, we don't have any of that fancy plate armour that defines those shiny knights in books. We have mail. Made up of thousands of interlicking iron rinks. It's extremely heavy, but it's very good against a slash. It's not so good against a smash. Which is why we wear thick padded garments underneath. This will help cushion the blood force drop. It's not great against stabbing, so we try not to get stabbed. So shields! Two types in this period. This is a kite shield. You may recognise it from the bare tapestry, the Netflix of its day. It's big, heavy, protects a lot, and it's horrible to use, so get rid of that. Next, we go to a heater shield. It's a kite shield, but I've chopped a bit off. This makes it a lot lighter, a lot quicker to move around, and generally all around, far superior. This will stop arrows, it will stop smashing, smashing, and stabbing. It's the bee's knees. So helmets, what might I wear to protect my noggin? This is a kettle helmet, so called, because you can make tea in it, if it had been discovered. It provides excellent protection from downwards and glancing blows. Brilliant piece of kit. Fantastic. Underneath that, I might wear this male coin. Again, stops for slashing at the neck. Wonderful. Under this padded liney thing, stops concussion. But most of the time, I won't be fighting. And I must protect from the greatest evil of all. Sunburn. So I wear my sun helmet. now. This is a spear. You can use it as a lance. You can use it to stab. You can use it to smash. These are brilliant. You don't need much skill. You just need to be fast. I'm going to arm my peasants with these. They're great. Great against horses. Great against Welshmen. And just quite nice to have around. So you're thinking. Spears. Puh, peasant weapons. We don't want them. Show us the swords. Now this sword, single-handed. It's got two cutting edges and a stabby, slashy, pointy bit at the end. I can hit with it. It's heavy. It'll hurt. It marks me out as a knight, shows my status and my skill. Swords are great. If I lose my sword, I've got a slightly smaller sword. Now this sword, you could stab in gaps, you could hurt people, and it's quite good for cutting up dinner. So what else could you use, I hear you ask? How about a mace? This brass-headed killing machine will smash. It's a great weapon for concussion. Maybe you can't afford that filthy peasant that you are. An axe! Just a tool. Chops down trees. Chops down Welshmen. Maybe you can't afford any of that, so you get out your hunting bow. You've got a longbow. You've got an arrow. It hurts. This will go through mail like nobody's business. Fantastic weapon. So you found yourself under siege. Hold up here in the mott. You have to defend yourself from a vicious Welsh army massing below. You have key advantages. This slope is a magnificent weapon. It's almost impossible to climb in armour, and anyone who doesn't climb up in armour is a fool. Now, you might defend yourself in a number of ways. You will be throwing rocks down, throwing boiling water down, shooting arrows, throwing rocks. There's no end to what you can do. This tradition continues to the present day, making sure we maintain this. But now, we have to have a sign. Is it the EU? Is it the British government? It's health and safety gone mad. When they get to the top, they're easy to dispatch. They've got to climb a wall, and as they climb, you can hack and smash them down. They won't be able to see. They'll have to have their shields up in front of you. You have all the advantages. The most important thing to do is make sure you have enough food and water to keep you and your family safe. Your job as a lord is to protect your people, but only to a point. If you find yourself running out of food and water, you just throw your people out. Their mouths to feed. You don't need them. Peasants come cheap. Protect yourself your family, and enough soldiers. So, you're a Welshman, and you think you can get into my castle? First, you'll have to contend with this massive hill. Think it looks fun to roll down? Wrong! It's too steep to roll, and too shallow to fall. You'll bounce. Even if you could get it, up at the top there's going to be walls. You've got options. You could try storming it. Throw your peasants at us, and we'll cut them down. You're not getting in. You could try and batter down the gates, but again, you'll be contending with arrow fire, hot water, and men on the tops. Any assault is going to be hard, dangerous, and expensive. So stay in Wales if you know what's good for you. This land's English. So, you might be wondering, why is there this big bird on my ship? Well, the answer is heraldry. When we Normans first came over, we didn't use much heraldry. We had flags, we had banners, but we knew who we were, and we don't care who you are. 
But since then, times have changed. Knights have land, we have honour. I want people to remember my name. John Fitz Allen. That way in 800 years some idiot will pretend to be me. But why this bird? This bird is a Harrison family crest. This bird is my bird's bird. I hope you get that joke. Thank you. <laughs>